Fast and Furious 9, directed by Justin Lin. This movie is the ninth mainline entry in a very long running series that should have ended years ago, in my humble opinion. And this movie opened up in China just recently. And despite breaking records uh, since the pandemic began, this movie in China has received bad word of mouth. For Chinese moviegoers, this movie just didn't deliver when it comes to uh, the actual plot, many of which consider it to be outrageous and ridiculous. And on that note, I would have to agree. The Fast and Furious series is something that's really a tragedy, because this series started out as something that was truly unique and interesting. The earlier movies in the series, particularly the first three, which is uh, Fast and the Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious, and Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, those movies explored the whole world of underground illegal uh, street racing. And then by the time the fourth entry rolled around with uh, Fast and Furious, these movies started to explore uh, heists and entered into the genre of spy films. As a result, the movies, as far as their quality goes, took a nosedive considerably and just became dumb, bland action films, which is what this movie is. It's stupid for pretty much the entire runtime. Unintelligible nonsense, to put it clearly. So all of your major characters return here, including uh, Vin Diesel's Dom Toretto and uh, Michelle Rodriguez and... They got Ludacris up in here again for some reason. Uh, Tyrese Gibson, who is just the uh, the dumb black token character who just is basically the, the walking punchline in this movie. Nothing he does or says actually makes any sense. And the movie just treats him as uh, the clown of the group, which is insulting for anyone who is actually of color. As a black male myself, I find it very ironic that we still have characters like this in the modern day. But this is Hollywood we're talking about. And you would think that a franchise, a massive mega blockbuster franchise such as uh, Fast and Furious, would have something in here for just about every uh, major ethnic group that's out there. But these movies really prove that it really doesn't matter how many different types of ethnic colored people that they put into this movie when the dialogue and the plot are so borderline cartoonish that they may as well have turned this into an animated film. This movie has some of the worst dialogue that I've heard in recent memory. They got lines in here that just don't really make any sense. And I thought Spiral was bad, but at least Spiral was funny in an unintentional kind of way. This is not funny at all. I think there was one joke in the entire movie that kind of worked, that was kind of set up well. And it's uh, one of the jokes with uh, Tyrese Gibson earlier in the movie. Outside of that moment, there was nothing for me to laugh at here. The dialogue is just cringeworthy, it's corny, it's childish, it's just stupid. For example, they got a scene in this movie, and I'm not joking about this, 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 this is an actual scene in this movie. They got a scene where Charlize Theron is talking to one of the uh, one of the bad guys or whatever, uh, some white dude with Meg Ryan hair or whatever the shit. And the guy that she's talking to refers to himself as Luke Skywalker. That's literally the line. Oh, I'm, I'm Luke Skywalker. And she's like, oh, uh, I, I don't think you're Luke. I see the daddy issues. But outside of that, there's not really a connection. And then he's like, oh, well, yeah, maybe... Maybe not. Maybe you're right. I'm more like Han Solo. It's at this point in this movie that I just started to roll my eyes at every cringeworthy, just garbage line of dialogue that was foaming out of the mouth of these actors. But then it gets worse. Then she's like, no, I don't, I don't think you're Han Solo. I think you're more like Yoda. He's like, oh, because Yoda's a, a wise and powerful Jedi. Then she's like, no, because Yoda is a puppet who has someone's hand up his ass. And I was confused. Maybe if my IQ was much lower than what it is, maybe I would have found that funny. It's like with these newer Hollywood blockbuster films, the ones that go on to make a billion dollars at the box office, I compare movies like this to uh, the Marvel movies, right? 
the Marvel movies are successful for, for a big reason, but they're not just successful because they're popular like this. The Marvel movies are successful because they are actually written well. The humor in those movies actually work. I'm not saying that every joke in the Marvel movies lands, but they land a hell of a lot more than some of these uh, recent Hollywood blockbuster movies, including this one that's making random off-the-wall comparisons to Star Wars. Another thing that I fucking hate about these new Fast and Furious movies is that ever since really around Fast and Furious 6, these movies have really become a showcase for random Hollywood cameos. In Fast and Furious 6, we had Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, as uh, the character Hobbs, I think it is. In Fast and Furious 7, we had Ronda Rousey, ironically someone else who went into the WWE. In Fast and Furious 8, we had Charlize Theron, who also makes a return here as a character that I really could care less about. In this movie, the big cameo is John Cena. But that's not even really the surprise. Oh, John Cena's in the Fast and Furious movie. It's like, we've already had two people from uh, the wrestling world enter into these movies. Because these Hollywood film producers know they can't get anyone who's truly serious about having a career in the acting field to star in these overblown and terribly underwritten films. And so they just hit up the most recent WWE wrestler who is just about to enter into retirement to star in these nonsensical movies. And John Cena is just the latest name. But his appearance in the movie is not really surprising. What truly is head-scratching, though, is that they hired John Cena to play the brother of Vin Diesel. On what planet does that make any sense? I'm wondering how that conversation went behind closed doors. So Vin, we have this new character in the next movie that we're really excited to talk to you about. This new character is Dom's brother. And there's going to be like a rivalry between these two characters and we're going to have these glorious uh, action set pieces and, and a bunch of interlaced family drama. I know that you're excited about this. Oh, so you guys gave my character a brother. That's, that's great. Who did you cast to play as him? Oh, I'm not sure if you've heard the news, but we have recently cast John Cena to play the character. Wait, wait a minute. You, you mean the wrestling guy? But he doesn't look a thing like me. I, d I don't think this is going to work out, guys. Well, it, it doesn't really matter. As long as you say your lines like you're supposed to and pose like you're supposed to, we're going to have another billion dollar hit on our hands. So don't worry about the specific details. Just do your job and let us worry about the actual hard work. Two hours. I sat through this piece of shit for two hours. Over two hours. And I found maybe one or two action sequences enjoyable. But for the most part, as far as the action sequences go, they are so ridiculous and over the top that I really couldn't take anything of what was going on in this movie seriously. In this movie, they have some kind of fucking strange new technology where the cars have the, the super magnets installed into them. And the driver can just turn a knob to turn the magnets on. And whatever is magnetic that's near these cars will automatically pull towards the master driving by. But here's the thing. The movie wants the audience to believe that these magnets are strong enough to pull entire cars that weigh thousands of pounds and even push them away. The fucking magnets in these movies basically give these cars force powers. The cars can basically do a force push and a force pull. The one with Charlize Theron and the other random dude are making Star Wars references, now it's actually starting to make sense. Especially towards the end of the movie, Tyrese Gibson and Ludacris strap into a car that has a fucking rocket on, on the top of it, and they shoot in the outer space so they can take out some stupid satellite. It's like, how stupid does this movie expect me to be to enjoy some dumb shit like this? Fast and Furious 9 is just... Another in a string of terribly overproduced movies that's aimed at the lowest common denominator possible. I am not a part of that common denominator, so I'm not going to enjoy something like this. And on top of that, I read today that they're already planning the 10th and the 11th installment in this fucking franchise. I'm sorry, but I don't care how many of these movies that Hollywood wants to shit out into a theater. 
I'm simply not going to enjoy them because the writing is terrible. It's as if the dialogue was written by a teenager. I don't care about any of these characters. It doesn't even matter if a character dies in one of these movies because they'll just bring them back a few movies later unless the actor themselves is actually dead in real life. Like Han, for example. I don't know why they even brought this character back. He died a few movies ago. If you have the balls to kill a character off in a story, make sure they stay dead. Otherwise, I'm going to start thinking that these characters are just invincible and they can do anything, which removes any and all tension from any of the action sequences that they're put through, because I know that no one is going to die. So me being a part of the audience, if I know that there's no danger in any of the action sequences in regards to the character's well-being, if I know that there's no consequence and there's no danger for any of these characters and the stakes for the situations that these characters are placed in is literally zero, why should I, once again, as an audience member, have any sort of investment into anything that's going on? I shouldn't. At all. This movie is garbage. Now, if you like these movies, fine. This is due out for release next month in the UK and the US. By all means, go and blow your money, pay for a ticket, take your entire family to go see this nonsense. But if you're someone who actually really likes movies and you appreciate a good story with well-written dialogue and likable characters, this is not for you. This is not for you whatsoever. Oh, and they had the nerve to give Cardi B a cameo in this movie. Fantastic. I wonder who they're going to put in the next movie. Maybe Taylor Swift will make a fucking cameo. Or even Billie Eilish. Maybe they'll put Tom Cruise in the movie and let him do some fucking action sequences. Complete nonsense. Love a family. But you turn that into anger. There's nothing more dangerous. <laughs>